so it is thundering outside um so i might not even be able to work out and the nice thing about this camera as well is that i don't have to keep on adjusting lighting like touching here touching there whatnot well when i touch certain places it goes a bit lighter and what have you but the lighting just kind of stays all throughout it does not shift and so i'm not distracted like all the time yeah that that's the nice thing about it uh, i hope that i'm gonna be able to exercise today but if it rains it, it, it i won't be able to it's starting to thunder i don't know if you can hear that but i certainly will be able to get this message out um because the lord is gracious he's amazing and he has given me a recording device that doesn't give me problems like praise god mm. i went to go and check in my um in my gallery to see if my videos saved and yes they did so let's go on right ahead and tell you what dreams explain to you what dreams i got last night um you know guys i've got a very evil family i do i have an evil 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 family but my family members are like pretty much south africa yesterday i spoke about how it is that south africa is as good as dead it is damned it is judged uh because of its stance with israel its abandonment its severance of di diplomatic ties with israel uh that it's it just basically is a done country it's done for it's done like it's over for south africa absent of a miracle that will change the mind of our leadership this country is on a trajectory for hell it is on a trajectory for death and collectively as a nation it is about to die but for a remnant that god is going to save for his own purposes all right well i, I do live in south africa that is my country uh perhaps that might be the issue the challenge and the land that you live in true but what my family members are is basically a sample representative or representation of south africa my family members are a sample representation of africa of Nzans. yeah that's my family all right uh and my family being the sample representation of the nation that is south africa you can therefore gauge ndefela using a tuning fork or some kind of a speculative device like a compass i don't know a litmus test anything at all a temperature a gauge all up in your grill you can gauge from my family's nefarious activity the true state of south africa as a land altogether it is utterly impossible for me to be the only individual living in a country right that has got literally almost every single family member involved in the occult it's impossible i cannot be the only one i'm not special do you understand uh my case is not unique at all I am not the only one i know it is an epidemic in especially the black community but i am pretty aware that indian people are very heavy into witchcraft too just like black people almost as much if not as much as black people uh <clears throat> i have had sorcery that i was slept with by how many of them like perhaps the two 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 white men um have put witchcraft on me it's not that pre prevalent in uh the white community the one white guy it was for career purposes he was competing it was a gay guy that was has somehow strangely converted to islam i don't know how it was working out for him to be gay and still muslim and then uh the other white guy that did this to me was a dude that had a crush on me that felt passed up or that felt like i just walked right by him not responding um at all and i was afflicted by that however most of the witchcraft that i have been slapped with has, has come from black people followed number two closely by indian people okay uh the country is made up of i guess all of these races but the four main recognized races in south africa are black white colored and indian and uh every so often uh, asians or the chinese the south the south and north koreans uh will, will be incorporated and bunched together in the previously disadvantaged group that is indian uh for the purposes of census and statistics etc there were not enough of them to uh give uh, a, a whole category uh, to them right in the new south africa as we were coming out of apartheid uh, but they have increased in number quite significantly enough for them to i guess be given the same status as uh, indian people but yeah so basically we've got some asians um indians who to a certain extent are also asian but not entirely right um and then there's there's coloreds and then there's blacks and then there's whites and out of those groups of people black people are prolific with sorcery followed closely if not at the same scale as indian people and then there's everybody else everybody else just falls into everybody else but despite that the level level of sabotage 
is prominent across all races because people are afflictors of one another just because they can and that's what they do because of the observation of the defeatism of black people uh everybody has basically rode that bandwagon where it is that good black people in other words black people that are good at what they do black people who are skilled in any regard if they're intelligent and so are academics at school or black people that are really good at what they do in corporate in the office in the business arena they have got those who compete with other people generally like if you are competing with a person at all in this country that is south africa those who compete with black people use the defeatism of black people against them so somebody that has a competitive little blood like you know infection against me for instance would use the fact that black people are so destructive of each other even to the point of using witchcraft so i basically fell splat on the ground thanks to those who are competing with me for career or whatever across all races irrespective of their race there was competition with me by people who felt like i was a rival in whatever regard do you understand yeah and they used what black people do to each other they used it they thoroughly climbed the bandwagon of black people's propensity towards throwing each other off cliffs and throwing one another underneath the bus all right my one of my my former boss some white chick decided to upon finding out that my mom had her fingers somehow in my case even though she ought not have had my fingers in my case because i was the employee of mtn she rode that wave and made a decision to basically add insult into my injuries where i was being suspended without cause from my job facing dismissal and they all decided to use my mom against me because they saw that my mother was irresponsible with me how it is that my mother even was infiltrated into my whole case at mtn they didn't understand they did not know how it got there but they were happy to use it that's just what happens in the black community the moment they see that your sister got a bone to pick with you they will ride it and you know divide and conquer that's what's good yeah if at all you've got a rival if you've got somebody that you are competing with you will use anything at all especially if that person is very strong to get to them and so everybody gets to black people through black people and the rest of the country gets to black people through black people they look at our defeatism and they use it so as a black person you have got to put a guard up around you put a shield around your body so fortified that no one can bring you in your own individual capacity low because the moment you have any weak weakness the moment there is any kind of a uh, hole in your bucket the moment there is even one perforation from your bucket the whole world that is competing with you is going to use it do you understand they're gonna use it and in the black community the perforations are not bark and our buckets the things that cause our buckets to leak is other black people other black people so when you are living in a country that has got a majority of black people and there is this level of abuse of black people by everyone using the defeatism of the black community the whole country is in disarray the whole country it's africa this is south africa it is largely black and so when you mess with the black community in a black country you on that day are messing with the whole nation so south africa as a country is judged south africa as a country is dying because of its murder of black people because of its m desecration of blacks through blacks so everybody else is under judgment the thing that i was speaking about yesterday um with south africa being uh, like done with as a nation god is using this defeatism against one another within the black community and therefore the capitalism by everybody else that's not in the black community against the majority demographic in the country that whole thing is literally laying south africa as a country waste it's destroying the whole country that is south africa it is destituting it it all of it all of it it is putting the whole land in the ground do you understand and uh, what it is that i am it's starting to rain now and when it rains i get so distracted by how loud the rain is but i will try to talk through it okay i will try to keep my peace and keep my cool all throughout it all because it is what it is uh i lost everything because i lost everything because black people are defeatist uh and everybody noticed it and as good as i am as gifted as i am as skilled as i am in so very many respects i had of course many of many people who are competing with me 
I had many people who were competing with me academically. I had many people who were competing with me professionally. I had many people competing with me in a lot of things like marriage, getting husbands, a family, acquisitions, etc. I had people competing with me on just about anything at all that I could do from various spheres of my life. And with that competitiveness, upon them making an observation of the incendiary character of my people, my family especially, they used it. They used it. It was like I've always wanted to basically bankrupt Karabo or get Karabo, get rid of her. I've always wanted to remove Karabo from the scene. And this is my shot. It is not only those that are outside of the black community that do this to us, it's other black people. When other black people make an observation of the way that their friend is being treated, they ride it. So my former friends rode the wave of my family's insensitivity towards me. My um, colleagues rode the wave. Black people, other black people. I had like this university rode the wave of what under heaven it is that black people did to me. And so I could not come up for air, I couldn't stand. So that's a country that is taking some of its best people and destroying them because they're making an observation that they were born wrong. They were born in an ecosystem that is incredibly defeatist. So the devastation of the black community in South Africa is the devastation of South Africa. Therefore, all these other people standing in silos, imaginative of the fact that this thing is a going concern and it can continue to be proliferated, are naive. Because you cannot massacre the black community in a black country and not have the whole country fall apart. It's Africa. It's not America. It's not even Europe. It's Africa. You cannot decimate black people in Africa and expect your country to stand. So everybody that has got a standoffish mindset where I'm concerned is just shooting themselves in the foot. You're going to destroy enough black people until there is such a big dent in the country. Given our sheer numbers, our popular, we literally are the majority of the population of this country. Just because of our sheer numbers alone, the economy is going to suffocate, the country is going to fall into disarray and there will be a civil war, the proportions of which will never have been ever heard before in this country. That's what we're headed for. And it will all be because of everybody's insistence of using black people's incendiary activity against each other, against them. So because you refuse to correct what it is that black people are doing, not only that, because you also insist on capitalizing on what it is that black people do to each other, everybody else is essentially kind of in a bad bunch. Everybody is in a rut. Everybody is going to have a bad day tomorrow because they are missing in a country that is full of black people, majority black people with black people. Is that basic? South Africa is literally going to get judged because of the apathy towards black people. It's going to fall as a country, com like the comprehensiveness of it all. It will fall because of causing black people to fall. And this will have been sparked by competi competitiveness in multiple arenas um, that then caused people to capitalize on that. Yeah. So my family members, what they are, as evil as they are, they cannot and definitely are not some kind of a skewed or biased sample that therefore cannot be used to accurately represent an entire country. They can. My family's makeup is similar to the makeup of many black families in South Africa. Black race of which is the majority of South Africa. Let's just put that out there. Let's just put that out there. We make up a big percentage of this country. And so because we make up a big percentage of this country, um, it is quite a big percentage of people that are walking in this ridiculousness. Uh, like, my family is full of witches. Almost everybody is practicing after they get to a certain age. And it is near on guaranteed that by the time kids in my family get to perhaps the age of 25, 6, when they start to graduate to, you know, a, a professional young adulthood, they start to dabble with witchcraft. It's almost inevitable. It's like a calling. It's like a calling, a very evil one. They get pursued by it. And even if, the, you know, you like umuntu agafanelu, a certain thing. And even if there was a time back in the day when they spoke about it very negatively, they nonetheless glide in it. My family members, by the time they get to the age of, let's round it off to the nearest 10, 30. By the time they get to 30, they have, they've, Dab they've dabbled, they've done some kind of witchcraft. Literally almost without fail. Almost without fail. Oh, there is, there are very negligible cases of people that have kept their hands pure. Everybody by the age, almost everybody by the age of 30 has used witchcraft. And I only use the word almost because it's fair to use the word almost. I'm tempted to say all. Only reason I did not end up using sorcery is because I gave my life before I could to Jesus. I got born again at 26 and a half. But if I had not gotten saved, I would very highly likely have inevitably used witchcraft in some way or form. Why? Because I'm black. 
and the black community loves to slap each other with witchcraft. They're always wearing the gum geta that they that they literally ram into people's faces. Black people cannot stand other black people being okay. And so in a crew of friends, you are going to be basically dealing with one girl that's going to decide I had that in my in my crew of friends from high school. One of them made a decision that she's gonna go and pursue her career as a chartered accountant while the rest of us are gonna struggle to be okay in life. My former best friend, her would-be husband, slowed down her career so that he would look appropriate next to her. Given that he, he was struggling in business and he was dating a woman that was studying and was inevitably on a skyrocket tra trajectory upward. And she was going to do really well in her career and so he slowed it down. But her would-be husband that now today is her husband was not her only afflictor. Um, she also then got come up against by some chick that wanted to be the most successful out of all of the crew of girlfriends and before any of us could do anything she had already determined our destinies one of my friends former friends from high school bewitched all of us all there were seven of us she bewitched all six of us to always be behind her in life so my former best friend's career was thwarted first by her would-be husband and then this chick so a double whammy slapped her do you understand uh the rest of them all put witchcraft on me what ultimately gets a person to a point where they are gonna be witch everybody well what what makes a person em like get there it's embitterment when you are crawled like dancing prancing hopping up and down through life and then you get met met with blockages with chocolate blocks that's when you start to consult sangomas and that's when you also start to want everybody else to be in a bad knot like you misery loves a company so we're using the example of my former best friend uh she had her future husband not only bewitch her prospects for a career slowing it down he also uh insisted that she stay with him even though she wanted to leave him so she was already blocked from getting the romance that she desired and she was also blocked from getting the career that she desired upon meeting with chocolate blocks and having a slow growth of career and a slow and basically an unloving a situation that she didn't want to be in romantically that she was trapped in by pregnancy she then once she was sitting around with a baby in a career that was not moving as fast as she would have loved it to move she then looked at everybody else she looked at me and she looked at basically well let me look let me talk about me in particular the spells that i know that she cast on me she came against my prospects especially in marriage she did not necessarily gun for my career she, not initially anyway she ultimately did but first she came for me with love do you understand because she was miserable and misery loves company so she wanted to be able to relate in the grain of settling that she was in with someone that she was on the come up with both of whom were but were ambitious for certain outcomes in life and she had already experienced a loss of some of her dreams and so she wanted somebody to join her in that grain and so she bewitched me and my prospects for marriage kept on getting dreams about her standing in the way of every guy that would pursue me because she wanted me to be regressed but that witchcraft was a byproduct of some other people's witchcraft it was a byproduct of the sorcery of the chartered accountant and also the byproduct of the sorcery of the boyfriend and the things that they the rut that she was put in by both people made her insist on putting me in a rut the same thing is also true of another one of my friends from high school where it is that a man that she married messed her up so badly that she then was like misery loves company and then she decided that she's gonna mess with the marriage prospects i believe of everybody but i certainly have gotten experience of my own sorrow at her hands do you understand what i'm saying it's people that would have left witchcraft alone they wouldn't have even bothered to visit a sangoma they would not have frequented the premises of these little witches to ask for anything at all if at all they were left to thrive if they were left alone if they were not manipulated spiritually they would have been okay if my former best friend had been left to basically leave a man she had desperate need of leaving and if at all my friend was in, uh, left to grow like this 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 chick that bewitched all of our careers this friend of mine let me tell you what this chick did okay this friend of mine like, how she affected the the, the my, my former best friend there was a time when my former best friend albeit being a whole graduate Sorry, albeit being a graduate from, um, just so you can understand the height of of, a source, of sorcery, that this this one girl, after like after she got her degree and was basically studying now towards her chartered accountancy, she made a decision that she's going to be the not, the not the only one successful, but the most successful. Her intention was not to impoverish everybody to my level. What I am is an anomaly that nobody expected to happen because God saw it fit to basically make me what appears to be an extreme case of cursedness that they might all look really bad. Bad. 
but I'm not cursed, I'm blessed, I can't be cursed, I am in Christ, I, I can't say that enough, but let's just get straight back to the point again, my friend, alright, my former best friend, uh, this chick, when she was en route getting a CA, made a decision that all of us are gonna sit around, okay, not sit around, but be behind her, we're gonna be tails to her, right, and she wasn't even the smartest, if anything, she was quite average in comparison to everybody else, but she wanted to be the only one to, uh, flying like a bird, anyway, whatever, right, so this uh, chartered accountant future chick, right, what she did, there was a time when my former best friend, was and at this stage i was born again right i had just gotten saved all right she had gotten some kind of an internship like a graduate program where she gained experience after getting her bachelor of accounting degree from this university and she was studying further to get i guess either her ca or cfa or whatever she wanted okay uh so when you have got that kind of qualification and you also managed to make it into a graduate pro program it's highly unlikely as that kind of a graduate from that kind of a university this to be ignored when you are looking for a job it's highly unlikely because it is rare first and foremost and it's a, it was at the time anyway a very highly sought after skill so to be ignored and to find yourself unemployed for any amount of time is anomalous but that happened to my friend and she had to end up working in kzn in some faraway bundu that she did not like just to make sure that she gains enough experience do you understand um in order to basically come back to johannesburg again the settle of the job in some other province in some bundu of KwaZulu natal it was not even central durban remember what i said the other day um about wanting to stay in Johannesburg there was a time when I was my mom had not paid my fees and I had to leave school blah blah all that jazz yeah and how it is that I did not want to leave Johannesburg because it is the economic center or hub of uh, it's the largest economy in South Africa and if at all you want a, a competitive salary that is going to be the highest in the land you have to get a job in South Africa because according to pay scale and according to I guess national statistics South African salaries to Johannesburg how dang salaries given that we have the largest economy excel above those of other major cities in the country like cape town and durban and of course they excel loftily above the non-major cities like if you are in a blasi a bundu you are very highly likely to be earning a negligible salary in comparison to a person with the same job in johannesburg yeah so this chick set my my former best friend up for failure in that she took her out of johannesburg and put her never mind in a major city but far away from the major city of that province she was made to live in KwaZulu Natal for a season not even in Durban and it was like I said a plazi a plazi just to keep working and she was miserable there she did not like her job they gave her a house and everything but she really didn't like it and she had to use that to springboard herself up to boost herself uh, in order to come back to Johannesburg she ultimately did come back to Johannesburg but the season of time of unemployment was so long guys that she was busy getting phone calls from creditors and from debtors creditors yeah on some hey you better pay us or we're gonna put you in the credit bureau now she was a, a person that was headed for either CFA or CA either a chartered accountant or certified financial analyst and in the financial services industry even though it is still unconstitutional I don't know why they're not listening to the law of the country if at all you find yourself for any reason at all uh, being a financial services professional on the credit bureau it's over for you it's over like this chick or dripile my friend hard and fast and she nearly lost her career she would have had to first get off the credit bureau before she would successfully interview for any job in the financial services industry as a financial graduate for crying out loud so this chick was sitting at home for like almost a year if not longer than a year and it was her sitting down at home that upon us talking on the phone i came to learn that yo she's having to make deals and everything right with uh like her her dead her debtors her creditors sorry people that she owes money on some please don't put me in the credit bureau i will pay you this this month i will pay you this that month uh her family was trying to help along but nobody had all that money to be able to help her along uh, i guess as well as she needed and again that should have been evidence of the fact that she should have left that man that she was with because as a man when your woman is in that position she should not have to face loss of her career why wasn't he able to pay off all of her debts during the time of her downtime he was literally trying to sabotage her career too acting like he doesn't have the money so i stepped up i was already born again at that stage um i already given my life over to jesus so i guess that's why that little random spells did not really work on me that's why i'm not under a curse god just saw it fit to put me in this position for such a time as this i called i was like my friend i will give you this much money every single month and you don't have to ever pay me back again and this is going to enable you to pay some of your debts because i understand that being a financial professional you are going to basically be ruined 
if you find yourself on the credit bureau you're gonna apply at a rand merchant bank your fnb you're gonna apply at investec you're going to apply at like a, a consultancy or whatever you're gonna apply at kpmg at price waterhouse coopers and they're gonna do a credit check on you and they're gonna be like this chick is only 26 she's only 26 for crying out loud and she is already on the credit bureau we cannot have financial services um professionals that are financially irresponsible to a point of ending up on the credit bureau so this chick set up my friend for failure she amazingly miraculously survived i guess that's what happens when you have somebody standing in the gap for you i used to pray for her every day to get a job and i also basically parted ways with something like two thousand rands of my own salary every month to make sure that wherever it is so she does not get put on the credit bureau and in that same time that's when she uh, uh, agreed i guess to relocate to move out of johannesburg initially she was not prepared to relocate for the same reasons i wasn't prepared to relocate but she ultimately landed a job in kwazulu natal and for her it was like it's either that or i find myself just perpetually stranded on the credit bureau as a financial professional she nearly destroyed my former best friend's career that that other one the first one that wanted to be the most successful one out of all of us she nearly derailed my former best friend's entire career if she had at all gotten on the credit bureau she was going to struggle to get successfully interviewed for a job she was going like the, the the recruitment agencies that would have called her up based on her cv based on her skills based on her uh, ac what is this Academ academia based on her degree they would have uh, called her can we please come and see you can you see us and they were going to do a credit check and not call her again they were going to do a credit check and not call her again guys so that's why she moved to kwazulu natal that salvaged her praise the lord she ended up coming back to johannesburg but the grain she was stranded in and again being all the way in kwazulu natal living by yourself away from everyone you love everything you know and it's a blood you are gonna be lonely and so a man that you desperately want to leave a man that you don't want to be with a man you don't want to stay with in a relationship is gonna be the only person traveling kilometers upon kilometers across um, provinces to see you so you're gonna feel like he's been there for me he is uh, basically stood by my side that guy had to be left on Ali busy roaming these streets with five different baby mamas uh, though dealing with a woman that's never had children never been married she needed a clean slate that's what that random chick did so she was set up for failure concerning romance very early and she was set up for failure concerning career and those failures are what basically raised in her a spirit of bitterness sufficient enough for her to then go on right ahead and uh, afflict her best friend she came at me with a flying kick because while there was a time when we both aspired for similar things now she had already lost some of those dreams and i was still going to grab mine and so she came at me i don't know who else she came at usually witches don't have one victim but i can only speak of what it is that she did to me the chick ole wow wow bewitching all of us to make sure we don't get anywhere god exposed her in light of showing me who else she bewitched because she literally came at the whole crew of girlfriends and one of the girls that she came against was so genius that she was like always in the top 10 on the honors roll at school for crying out loud and she came against that and she was average she was average that's what I, I, under heaven happened but the one that was always on the top 10 Lena decided to fill out randomly because she belonged to a cult she was a jehovah's witness but what i'm trying to explain to you guys is that witches they 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 are um, like artificial intelligence that way they put themselves in positions of honor and grandiosity above people who ought to have done much better than them and so that they can come out looking really great on the other side but they don't have the true talent the true skill and so therefore those who are true geniuses in society are swept under the rug by people who are literally mediocre and when you don't have a barometer to compare them by you literally won't know that a country is missing something so the country does not know that it's missing me it also does not know that it's missing the top 10 chick in the school it's they, they like the country doesn't know that it's missing people it doesn't know because there's no barometer by which to compare the losses do you understand that's what you all need to understand people make a decision that i'm going to be the only one successful even though they are brutally mediocre and they cause actually excellent people to be buried disappear off the face of the country for crying out loud who in the world continues to proliferate rubbish of that nature who lives in a land like that uh, so my family members so now that i've explained that whole dynamic with my former best friend and what happened to her and what was the root cause of even her inclination towards sorcery it was other black people it was the ridiculousness in the black pe community where people decide basically you know god likes to call them planners of other people's plans he calls witches planners of other people's plans like they make plans for other people they plan for other people to walk in a stead that they did not sign up for they plan for other people 
to do A, B, C, to marry certain people. A man that puts Gorobela on you is planning your wedding on your behalf to him when you can't make a plan to marry a certain kind of man. You want a godly man. You want a man that is this tall. You want a man that has these interests. Yeah, but the guys, the, the, the Gorobela person, rather plans that you're gonna marry him, whether or not you like it. They are planning other people's plans. And the level of chaos around a person, therefore, who has had which a spells cast around them is such that it causes them to end up embittered because everything that they are trying to acquire in life, everything that they're vying for in life, it just somehow reaches a chocker block. It, you know, you, you find yourself unable to get it but remember you tend to hang out with like-minded people and so if at all you all have the same ambitions when you were all in high school do you understand what i'm saying and then all of a sudden you are displaced from your dreams by witchcraft you're then going to look at everybody else around you on the left and on the right do you understand and you're gonna be like i'm not gonna be the only one that did not get what we all wanted to get together i'm not gonna be the only dropout at varsity so i'm gonna be with you to also drop out i'm not going to be yeah etc they manipulate people's outcomes and so they in they, they cause people to sin according to the scriptures it would be better if a millstone were tied around the neck of a uh, of a person and that person be thrown into the ocean then then for them to face god in the judgment if they cause any of these little ones of mine to sin so in other words when people cause a sin they are in a far worse state than everybody else around everybody else around right the person who sows discord between brothers the bible also says offenses will come so in other words sins offenses mistreatment callous behavior will come but woe to the man through whom those offenses come when a person has been the initial spark in a dry arid field full of grass when they're the first spark that causes an inferno well i mean the fir inferno must come according to the bible the fields must burn people will sin but woe to the man that started that spark woe to the one through whom these sins have commenced so basically that random chartered accountant from my high school that caused all of my other friends to sin woe to her offenses came they sinned but woe to the man through whom these offenses came she is basically facing a grander torment in hell than all of them combined all of my friends in high school cast spells on me but woe to that one who initiated um king the, the sorcery of other people where you will like chalk a block or blo prevent a person from doing something and upon them being disquieted by their inability to achieve their dreams then getting so bitter that they will then become witches woe to you if at all you're the person that caused a person that would never have dabbled with witchcraft if you are the person that caused them to finally consult a sangoma woe to you one of my friends also was caused to get into witchcraft because of a horrible man an ex-husband that ransacked her life so badly embittered her so terribly that i guess woe to that man that caused my friend to be that bitter to a point of using witchcraft on me she was in misery and she wanted me to be a divorcee too she wanted me to also be unlucky in love whatever that even means she also wanted me to hit brick walls in that regard in the romantic field and so she bewitched i don't even think it was just me i think it was all, everybody but like i said um the oh, the one that god is a lot offended with very offended with is the one the ca that messed with everybody she's the one that that god showed me or everyone that she bewitched because all the other of my friends god did not show me what they did to each other if at all anything he rather showed me what they did to me because i guess i had i, I, I was a, a person of interest in that regard i was a stakeholder of their sorcery so he showed me what they did to me but not what they did to each other but witches very rarely ever have one victim so i don't know what they did to each other except for that one because she did it in one spell in one sitting she visited a sangoma and said all my friends from high school go fella born they will not be anything in comparison to me i am going to be the success the most successful one for crying out loud and that spell i saw it working or in my former best friend and if that chick did not have anybody standing in the gap for her that was actually truly saved i don't know where she would be today i was already newly saved after um, you know, when she started to struggle uh, to you know uh, have a way with her future and so therefore i was able to successfully stand in the gap for her help her along and then she bounced back again but then later on she ended up turning back turn, turning to sorcery too so my my the, the friend that i had all the way laying everybody the one that bewitched everyone my former best basically my whole crew of friends from high school all belonged to families in south africa they all belonged to families in this country all right and so basically since all of them are clearly are witches from what god showed me all of them do you understand all of them are witches 
and they belong to families and so therefore it evidences that in the black community in particular there is such a, a high percentage of witchcraft um involvement by people there is such a high percentage of no that just went too dark there is such a, a high percentage of people practicing witchcraft in the black community that in any family at any given time you would likely be dealing with like a good 70 to 80 percent of the members they're in involved in some kind of sorcery why would that even be true look at my friends right this rain is going to distract me and make me very 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 uncomfortable to speak because it's so loud but i will try to uh, articulate myself above it okay the one of the biggest reasons why rain is so destructive to my speeches is because of this corrugated iron roof that is so loud when rain lands on it that i can't even hear myself think but i hope to be able to maintain my thoughts anyway and i hope the rain like slows down just to enable me to finish this discussion so that i can get my my, my thoughts out fully and wrap my my argument in an inference that is understandable by you okay right uh what 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 was i talking about yes all of my friends from high school they belonged to families right and in the black community just based on the sample representation that is my own family a good 70 to 80 percent of people and families are practicing witchcraft and you know the saying charity begins at home well well the opposite is also true i like to say that witchcraft is a crime of passion in other words people who commit witchcraft tend to bewitch people they love they tend to bewitch people they admire people they look up to it's not usually just random strangers around unless they are running a coven and unless they're psychopaths usually witches will target people they love so who are the people that you love the most it is your brother it's your mother it's your sister it's your you get my point it's your boyfriend it's people that are closest to you it is people that you hold very clear uh, dearly uh, to your heart uh, do you understand Whew. this rain is gonna distract me but I'm gonna try to talk over it I, I would love to be able to speak without spe raising my voice very high but anyway whatever mm. witchcraft is like I said a crime of passion so they tend to focus on people that they do love uh, meaning that they of course focus their energies on, on on family members and friends and close people like boyfriends you know colleagues that they look up to or are always talking with laughing with in the office which is rarely ever target strangers at a distance I have had a few crazy ladies and men bewitch me from a distance that didn't know me but they're a very small number like i said there will always be outliers in society that do crazy things uh and so people who bewitch out of the blue people that are there at a distance but they are not many they don't make up the majority of witches the majority of witches that will come up against you are in your family they're in your friendship circle they are sleeping with you at night they're your husband they are your uh boyfriend they are your colleague that you're always working closely with, with in the projects at work it's people that see you every single day that talk with you that pass you pleasantries that break bread with you they will be the ones to afflict you so if those friends of mine could put witchcraft on me since i was their friend then you can near on with accurate hand to glove success apply what they did to me to their own uh, families my friend was jealous of my prosperity for marriage for love for all that which i wanted there is no way therefore that she did not come up against her sisters likely there is no way that she did not come up against other of our friends who were single she did not want to see anybody happy in love that, she, that was close to her she didn't want to have to cry when she sees other people do well in that area so it's likely that she it's likely that she might have also cast spells on her sisters she had two sisters i don't know uh if she did but it's likely i'm i'm using probabilities over here uh gingy the the um, the one for instance that got married in a cult she came against my prospects for marriage and a career because she had to stop working she had to stop working because of the cult they were they made her knock door to door as a jehovah's witness while she had like a whole financial degree mathematics degree from university she was an academic she was supposed to thrive and get a career but they made her a stay-at-home jehovah's witness wife so she became embittered and wanted me to basically have her fate she wanted me to be a stay-at-home wife to some dude in a cult that married me off to him that i don't even love so it is usually affliction and 
compromise a settling that causes these people to in and of themselves turn to sorcery and then the, the one where Jehovah's Witness this stuff didn't suit her I don't know there is no friend of mine oh like it guys no one in my life looked like the kind of person that would consult a sangoma I had another friend who was actually the cousin of my former best friend strangely but we met in different uh, ecosystems I met her when I was working at MTN she and I used to talk all the time about what we wanted in men and the, uh, she was older than me by like three years but when I met her we were both still single waiting I guess for husbands and stuff well no we were both dating but we were single in the sense that we were not married yet um, she broke up just like I broke up with my ex-boyfriend with the guy that she was with for very many years for very many years uh, the guy that guy on LPZ Amo user not use what's this he was toggling two girls at the same time he was dating her and somebody else anyway so it was great that she broke up with him uh, right and after they broke up we were even more solidly convicted that the two of us are gonna we're not gonna have children out of wedlock none of us are gonna have children out of wedlock these men must marry us first ain't no man ever gonna convince me to give him a baby that those are the conversations we used to always have she met some dude that pressurized her into giving him a baby this guy was already a baby daddy of one he already had a baby mama he never made an honest woman and she could not see that as a warning sign he's not the, he's the kind of guy that makes a baby and leaves do you understand and this guy gave her so much pressure he was so wealthy that he could have afforded to take out Nobola real fast he could have afforded to marry her really quickly it would not have taken much but instead he insisted that you know he was such a big baby that would, that would throw his toys out the cart he basically emotionally manipulated my friend into finally giving him a child I believe that guy also used witchcraft on her because she literally lost her mind when she was with him her family didn't even like him yeah after giving him the first child you would imagine that Lobola now would finally start happening no it didn't happen she gave him a second child this guy bought her when she was heavily pregnant with I don't know if it was a first or a second pregnancy he bought her some big SUV some big chunky car and I'm like you bought a woman a car an expensive car instead of take out Lobola you know when a man is that narcissistic and that manipulative when he is so abusive that he would show a woman that I can afford to take out Lobola but I just don't want to you're just gonna give me babies what the heck this man already had a baby by some other woman my friend should have stuck to her guns if she loved him that much that you will marry me first or i'm getting out of this but she stuck around gave him two babies and all she got instead of lobola was a car well the same friend the ambitions we had in that we were not going to give husbands boyfriends babies before marriage she of course abandoned that dream and now she was looking at me who was still bright-eyed and bushy-tailed waiting on better waiting to marry my husband then only have a baby she was miserable in a union with a man that tricked her tricked her do you understand and so she turned to witchcraft she bewitched me she bewitched my prospects for marriage I had a dream where she had abandoned the baby that she gave that guy at the corner of a hospital because she was suffering from postpartum depression she didn't even want her baby and she was shoving that baby down my throat on some you take care of it in other words in that dream she was suggesting you have a child you have a child with some boyfriend and then you and I can be the same again so basically setting a woman up for failure the way that you fell apart that man bewitched my friend so that she would become Nambi Pambi and docile to suggestion of that nature when she finally realized that she was trapped she then got so embittered that she came back at me I'm trying to make a point here that witchcraft begets witchcraft that witches beget more witches they put people in such bad straits they put people in such a bad corner they they, they essentially incarcerate people in stranded lives until in order to get out or in order to feel a sense of camaraderie with their ecosystem they then bewitch everybody else around so they won't be the only ones that have fallen in a grain of nothingness in a grain of basically incarceration that's what in the world under heaven was going on here mm. so those are two cases that i have told you of of two of my very good friends now turned mortal enemies essentially due to the fact that somebody bewitched them first and then they ended up bewitching me witchcraft begets witchcraft so if enough black people who are so defeatist against each other bewitch black people you are then gonna be beget more black witches the growth of witchcraft in south africa has happened because of people finding themselves in dire straits people finding themselves chocolate blocked 
people finding themselves unable to move and people also finding themselves in ecosystems they never signed up for dreams and visions that they had when they were children when they were younger were shattered in a matter of months after meeting certain people and upon their dreams being squandered just like that by some random thief on the periphery of them that calls themselves a colleague or a sister or a mother or a brother a friend or a, a, a classmate upon being decimated by people on their periphery then in and of themselves become decimated Maters. Their sorcery begets more sorcery. They then end up bewitching everybody else because they were bewitched. And they don't even know that their reaction to bewitch is frankly from witchcraft. They think they just made mistakes. They think they just dropped the ball on their dreams. They think they made a decision to just give some guy a baby even though she wanted to have children only once married. They think that they, they married a man because it's what they wanted to do. And even though at the time they felt like they were dumb and the wrong voices were in their heads, the wrong people were in the ear, uh, they then imagined that thanks to the mistakes that I made unawares to themselves that it was not a mistake they would have walked in if it was not for spiritual manipulation. They don't know that they were made witches by other people bewitching them. So that's how then you find yourself having the proliferation of a pathogen, the growth of a bug, do you understand, that is unfettered with no antibiotic in the black community where families grow from being one witch to like 10 cousins now are doing the stuff, 15 next year, 25 family members the year thereafter. And by the time five, 10 years has progressed, you have got Medea's family reunion of witches. It's more like a coven where an entire family is now a coven. My own mother was made a witch by her sister who bewitched her when she was still a teenager they were still both teenagers she was older than my mom by a year and because of all of the chocolate blocks that my mom met later on in life because of her sister my mother became embittered and started bewitching everything and everyone around her her friends etc blah blah the witchcraft of my mom's sister is what caused her to end up married to my dad at all my dad was the absolute wrong fit he was a wicked man a horrible guy he was one of those dogs that are busy sleeping around all over the show that was my dad he did not make sense for my mom even in the slightest and my mom settled for him and their marriage was also uh, what is this there was a groove put in it there was a, a discord sown in a marriage with a man that was already a loose cannon he was already a loose cannon and then more witchcraft was put on both him and my mom my dad was never into witchcraft but he was just a worthless guy he was not the kind of man that any woman would wanna, woman would want to end up with he was never serious with anything or anyone he was entirely selfish he could never focus on anyone but himself that was my dad so she was made to marry my dad and then after marrying my dad my dad and my mom were then put under a spell in their marriage it sowed discord in their union so early that they were fighting literally from the time that they they tied the knot by the time that i was made there was so much war in that marriage and they got divorced when i was just five years old uh my my older sister and i are separated by two years a gap in between us and when she was made there was some want tranquility and peace but by the time i was made there was war and there was no way that marriage could continue to linger so they got divorced ultimately right uh, when my mom was like maybe like 31 32 that's what's good my mother being 31 32 and not born again unsaved and being as gorgeous as she was if you think i'm pretty understand i ain't got jack on my mom do you understand she was far more beautiful even than me she was one of those hard knock yellow bones as he had tiki that every guy was trying to get with all right that was my mom yeah how in the world does a 31 year old i'm 39 right now my genes are from my mom this anti-aging thing that i got going is from my mom how in the world does a 31